In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the full kiosk browser on an Amazon Fire tablet and set up your Sharp tools coming up next. Hi, this is Justin from Simply Smart, where we make smart home technology as easy as one, two, three. So if you're interested in smart home technology, consider subscribing for more content like this. And in this video, what we're going to do is install the fully kiosk browser and set up our sharp tools. It will take up the entire screen here and it will also automatically turn on and off with motion. So what we're going to do first is install the fully kiosk browser. So over in silk here, um, when you go to this website, and I'll leave a link to this website in the video description. And on the right hand side, you can see all of the versions that you can download. You obviously want to download the Fire OS version if you are on a Fire tablet. Now, if you are not on a Fire tablet and you're on an Android tablet, just choose the proper APK. Um, it tells you all the features and everything here as well. So you can kind of read through that. There is a ton of settings. And it can be a little bit overwhelming, um, but we're going to show you exactly what settings you need to do to get this working. So let's go ahead and download the OS version and go ahead and download at the bottom and go ahead and open it. And once open, it's going to tell you all the stuff that it's going to be doing. So we're going to go ahead and tap install on the bottom right. And the app is installed and we're just going to go ahead and hit open. Right. And it's going to come up to this screen here and let's go over. If you slide over from the left, you can get to the menu. So um, what we want to do is go into our settings and get all of our settings set up correctly. All right. So um, under the web content settings, um, obviously we are going to have to set up our start URL, but we're going to do that a little bit later in the video. And what you want to do is make sure that you have these settings exactly as I'm going to show you now. All right, and we're going to want to enable pop-ups and open URL schemes and other apps. And we are done in this section. So we're going to hit the back button in the web auto reload. You want to be sure that you do not change any of these settings because sharp tools will automatically reload. And if you have um, the fully kiosk browser do that, um, it's going to create some issues for you. So do not touch any settings in here. Under the advanced web settings, we want to enable JavaScript interface. Tap that on. And that's pretty much it in this section. We're going to go ahead and hit the back button. Under screensaver, tap that. Um, you're going to want to change your screensaver time at the top. I'm just going to put in 30 seconds. Um, you probably want to make that a minute or two. Um, just mess around with um, what works best for you. And um, the screensaver wallpaper URL, let's tap that. And we want to append CC at the end and click OK. And the screensaver brightness is 1. Click OK. And that's all we need to change in this setting. So we're going to hit back. All right, under device management, we're going to want keep screen on checked. And if you want your um, fully kiosk browser to start every time the tablet restarts, um, you would want launch on boot on. So we're going to tap that on. All right, motion detection is very important because that's how it's going to wake up from the screensaver. And um, you're just going to turn on enable visual motion detection at the top here. And you can mess around with the sensitivity and frame rate and darkness level. Um, find out what works best for you. We're just going to leave those as default. And at the bottom, just make sure we can actually turn screen on on motion. Turn that off. We must make sure that the exit screensaver on motion is on and we can go back and that is pretty much all of the settings that we need to change now we do need to um, put in our start url 
So let's go ahead and get that URL from our Sharp Tools. We're gonna to go back over to our Silk browser and I have my Sharp Tools app open already. Go into the dashboards. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the dashboard that I want to automatically come on when the fully kiosk browser loads. What you wanna do is just select the path at the top and copy that. Then we want to go back to our fully kiosk browser app and fill in the start URL. So we're going to delete what's there just by hitting the backspace, press and hold, paste in our path. And then what we need to do is append something to the end of this path so that it will work. Um, and it will open full screen with no menus whatsoever. What we want to do is type in a question mark, kiosk equals true. Right, so once you have your question mark, kiosk equals true, we are done here. And now we can start using it. We'll just tap at the bottom to start using. And we're going to have to enable some permissions. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK here and it's gonna open up this window and we are going to choose the fully kiosk browser and turn that to be on and click OK. Now we can go back and now um, that it's gotten the permissions, we just need to activate this. All right, now you are gonna to have to log in. Now remember we're on the fully kiosk browser now so you are going to have to log in one time into your Sharp tools um, and do not clear the cache or set up anything like that because it will wipe out your login information. I'm just going to log in with my phone. It's super easy. You just tap on the phone icon and you type in your phone number that you signed up with and then they're going to send you a code. You type that code in and then you're good to go. Okay, now that once we have logged in, you can see that it's opened up our dashboard completely full screen. There is no menus or bars or anything taking up any space on the screen. It's just 100% dashboard. Now you do notice that it does say plus features activated. Please get a license in a watermark at the top and the bottom of the screen. Um, but that is um, because you have to buy a license, of course. Um, to do that, you can just slide over and click get a plus license and that will get rid of that. Um, but I would just probably use the free version, make sure it works for what you need it for. That is pretty much all you have to do to set it up. Remember, we set up the motion and what that's doing is using the camera on the front face of our device here. So if I sit back and wait, I think we set it for 30 seconds. It will turn off in 30 seconds when no motion is detected. So it will just basically turn a black screen. And then all you have to do is when that happens, go ahead and wave your hand. Um, in my case, you know, wave my hand over the screen. So you can see it's completely dark now. And I just wave my hand over and it opens. So once you put this on the wall, as long as you have motion in front of the camera, it will stay on. You probably want to change it to be, I don't know, probably a minute. Um, but every time you walk by, it will it'll turn on. And then you can easily look at your front door, front lock, back door, um, check your alarms, easily turn on lights. So I can easily just turn on this couch light, just tap it, and send the command in the upper right hand corner. And you can see that it's glowing and my couch light is on in the bottom right hand corner. Same thing if I want to turn it off, just tap it. It'll turn it off. Um, I got my thermostats here. Um, I have my weather in the middle. Um, also, we have routines here. So if I tap this, it's going to give me all of my routines that I have in Smart Things to choose from. Um, but you can do all kinds of things depending on your setup. But that is pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. And I will see you in the next video.